Bonjour, mes amis. I'm Jane Reeves, standing here on Champ de Mars, right in front of the Grand Palais Femer, where the second edition of Paris Plus Bar Art Basel is set to open tomorrow to the public. The City of Light is celebrating art with many events, including Tema and Design Miami, its inaugural Paris edition. I have a separate video, the link in the description below. Without any further ado, let's go and explore the world of contemporary art. It seems like only recently the biggest worry was the bed bug infestation in the French capital. Now you see the anti ram barriers are installed around the site. Paris is on high alert after a recent terrorist attack and the crisis in the Middle East. Art Basel CEO Noah Horvitz issued a statement. A sphere organizes the safety of our exhibitors, visitors, and staff is of utmost importance. Following the successful debut last year, I'll link my video in the description, Paris Plus returns to the same venue with 154 galleries. Next year, the fair will move to the historic Grand Palais, which is currently under renovations. The preview day is well attended. Some people came straight from Freeze London, while others chose Paris specifically. The crowd is largely American and European. The main sector, galleries, offers vibrant art across multiple disciplines, ranging from painting and sculpture to AI-generated art and interactive installations. You can work out while enjoying art at the same time. Now let's just browse a little. Lots of names are familiar. Livy Gorvidayan, formerly known as LGDR. German Gallery Karsten Grieve. Sarah Lucas at Sadie Coles. Clearing Gallery, which recently moved from Brooklyn to Lower Manhattan. It's refreshing to see new galleries I've never heard of. Rodeo. Simone Suval, Selma Firiani, and this one I can never pronounce. Richard Nagy Gallery from London is among a few additions this year with some rare works from the early 20th century, like this marble by Calder. About 40% of exhibitors are based in France, as Clement de Lepine, Fierce Director which underscores the French identity of the fair. Among them, Gallery Menor, Natalia Abadia, Templon, Chantal Crozel, and many others. One of the emerging French galleries, Cécile Facouri, has a solo booth of works by a young artist born in Guadeloupe. His poetic art is deeply rooted in Afro-Caribbean and Akan culture. My name is Elad Jansi de Lumo. I come from West Indies. I'm a painter. I did fine art school Beaux Arts de Paris. And all this body of work you can see, each painting uh, will light uh, my different residency and travel between Ivory Coast, Senegal, and uh, Guadeloupe uh, and West Indies. Each uh, painting is uh, between uh, um, the dream and the reality. Uh, I like to paint uh, uh, different artists, photographers or designers. And for this uh, painting, this is a friend. Her name is uh, Asukroake. And uh, I paint this uh, painting in Ivory Coast. How was the opening? The opening, it was really amazing. I met a lot of people, a lot of artists, and that really is the part part in, uh, in the process of the production for me. There are several partner presentations. This includes Un Autre Monde. It's a commission work by Malagasy artist Joëlle Andriana Mierisoa, a diptych. French fragrance company.
at the art workshops of the Grand Palais in collaboration with the engraving department of the Louvre, has a booth with sculptures and etchings by French artist Jean-Marie Aprieu. The storied French fashion house Louis Vuitton, which is an Art Basel global partner, has a prominent booth in the shape of a giant trunk. It displays unique collaborations with different artists, including Damien Hirst, Tadashi Murakami, Yayoi Kusama, and many more. One of the highlights of the fair is a presentation at Pace. The New York Gallery designed a Rothkos-inspired booth. Some works are new, commissioned specifically for the fair, while others were painted by his contemporaries that reflect Rothko's influence. This includes works by Ito Barada, Anthony Tapies, Li Yufan, Adolf Gottlieb, Robert Longo. It coincides with an exhibition Mark Rothko at the Fondation Louis Vuitton, which runs through April of next year. And this one is by the artist himself from 1956, available for $40 million. Here's another gallery from New York, Michael Warner. Kevin Cho tells us about their featured artists. Uh, my name is Kevin Cho. I'm a director at Michael Werner in New York, um, but we also have spaces in London and Berlin. Behind me is a work by Peter Saul. It's from 1961. Peter was actually living in Paris at the time, so it's a kind of a homecoming for this painting. Uh, it's part of his Icebox series. So you can see it's a refrigerator that's overflowing with food, condiments, and leftovers. Um, and during this time, there was a lot of interest in pop art and abstract expressionism. And in this painting, you can see the artist trying to negotiate between the two dominant styles. Um, it's also quite significant because um, this is him trying to figure out his own kind of stylistic identity. Uh, and so it's a kind of major turning point for the artist. And this is a painting by British painter uh, Hervin Anderson. It's using a grill motif or a fencing motif that he's seen throughout Trinidad. Um, and for him, the motif is about sa safety and security, but it's also about kind of exclusion and separation. And so, the, you know, as, as a motif, it is at once decorative, but it's also a signifier for class division. And so he's really trying to get the viewer to come face to face with this idea of exclusion. And the last artist I'd like to highlight is uh, Izzy Wood. Uh, she's a painter based in London. With Izzy's work, I would say all of her paintings have to do with the idea of desire, uh, specifically objects of desire. Um, this painting is showing a set, a porcelain set, a dinnerware set, um, probably a mycin. Uh, set that she saw in an auction catalog um, and it's framed by these chains. In a way, by putting these, po these porcelain plates behind chains, she's almost trying to suggest, I think, the idea that our material desires may end up imprisoning us. If you're into sculpture, here's Anton Kern Gallery. If you didn't know, Anton Kern's father is Georg Baslitz. Our gallery in New York City in Midtown Manhattan, and we're doing a presentation of works by the artist Francis Euprichard, who is a native of New Zealand and now lives and works in London. And it's a booth with uh, sculptures, ceramics, watercolors, glasswork by Francis. The main part of the presentation is these giant bronze and balata works that Francis has made in the past two years or so, uh, one of which was in her recent exhibition in Beale, Switzerland. And it's a mix of uh, works in bronze and works in bolada, which is a rubber that comes from Brazil. It's a very difficult material to work with. Francis is one of a handful of people in the world that knows how to work in it. You have to work with it very quickly and underwater. And so the bolada rubber works are made and shown in their original state, but ultimately must be cast into unique bronze sculptures because the rubber is not archival. We had a really great response and people are very pleased to see such a big and extensive presentation by her. There are several booths from Latin America, including Agencil Carioca from Brazil. And this is Galeria Luisa Strina from Sao Paulo. 
Luisa Strina is the longest running contemporary art gallery in the country. Uh, next year, uh, the gallery is going to celebrate its 50th anniversary. And for uh, Paris Plus 2023, we bring a selection of uh, mid careers and uh, more established artists from our roster. And the highlight of our booth uh, is this historical piece just behind me by Sildo Meirelles, uh, who's probably the most uh, important living artist in Brazil. And we're super proud to present uh, uh, this wall installation from 1978. On my left, uh, we have a group of sculptures by Ana Maria Maiolino, Italian-Brazilian artist, same generation as Sildo Meirelles and works a lot uh, with drawing, sculpture, and many other mediums. And to my left, we have a brand new work by Portuguese artist Leonor Antunes. And this work specifically deals with the legacy of Sophie Tauberar. It's inspired by the beadwork that Sophie Tauberar used in her jewelry. The top-tier Mexican gallery Curi Manzuto makes its debut here, featuring Roberto Gilmontes. Since the preview opening, several major galleries have reported sales. Spruth Magers has sold Barbara Kruger's Sorry Not Sorry and Anne Imhoff, Billy. Next to it, Hausen Worth, of it just opened a new space in Paris, sold out its entire booth. David's Warner's big ticket sales include Black and Part Black Birds in America by Kerry James Marshall for $6 million and Alice Neal Abdul Rahman for £3 million. Tadeusz Ropak reported a number of sales including Jan Pei Ming, Martha Jungworth, Georg Baslitz, Anthony Gormley, and Simone Hantai. Looks like the fair is to a successful start. But now it's time to head outside. Right across you can see the iconic Eiffel Tower on Chant de Mars where Parisians have picnics with plenty of rosé. Like last year, the show spills outdoors for free public programming. Gagosian takes over one of the six off-site venues on Place Vendôme. The Sculpture Wave by Urs Fischer. The Swiss artist is known for his wax figurines, but this time it's a five meter high milled aluminum sculpture, part of his Big Clay series. It's on view through December 1st. Well, that wraps up my overview of Art Basel Paris Plus. 2023. From Paris, I'm Jane Greaves. Aviento.